So we should draw some lines here uh, between what, what C3AI is and does and, and, and maybe isn't. Um, naturally, the, the greater buzz and attention around AI has people excited uh, about all things AI. Now, you have enterprise customers. They, you make their network smarter, make them run more efficiently and, and apply artificial intelligence to some of their functions. Um, how is that? How is that kind of seizing upon some of these other innovations that are about search and chat and, and language generation and things like that? Great question, and, and thank you for asking. So we spent the better part of the last 13 years and about a billion and a half dollars building this software stack called the C3AI platform that we apply in some of the world's largest organizations, United States Air Force, Department of Defense, Shell, Coke Industries, others, to build a very large scale uh, predictive analytics enterprise AI applications. And this is based upon a model driven architecture. And so we've been tracking what's going on in open AI kind of very closely in recent years. And we're uniquely positioned to take advantage of that, not so much for chat GPT, but we can, what we are doing with the C3 AI generative AI, which is what all the buzz is about, is combining the C3 AI platform, basically the Google search user experience model, natural language processing, generative AI, okay, and reinforcement learning to fundamentally change the human computer interaction model as it relates to these enterprise applications, be they CRM, ERP, manufacturing, demand forecasting, supply uh, chain uh, management, fraud, what, what have you. So it's a, we're kind of uniquely positioned to take advantage of the, this great explosion that we're seeing in generative AI for a very, very practical uh, real world enterprise application experience. Got it. So it certainly seems, though, that it's more an enhancement or a feature of, you know, an input to what you're still selling as these very large corporate subscription based uh, systems, right? Is it allows whether we're dealing with the chairman of the, of the Joint Chiefs of Staff or a corporal on the flight line, whether we're dealing with the CEO of Bank of America or a teller or a or a Bank of America customer, they're all using the same human computer interaction model. And it's a natural language interface using something that looks like the Google search engine. Again, it searches, you know, the entire, these the generative uh, pre-trained transformers have basically you know, crawled the entire web of the enterprise, be it DOD, United States Air Force, or Bank of America, and making these answers instantly available, you know, to whether it, whether it be the the account holder, whether it be the branch manager, or whether it be the um, the CEO of Bank of America, and so it's a it is a fundamentally new uh, it is a breakthrough in the user um, human computer interaction model for enterprise applications, both for consumers and for enterprise users. Is there any risk, Tom, that because every company, the huge ones included, are now making such a priority of developing? AI capabilities or applying it in different ways that, in fact, you have lots of new competitors and people are going to be jockeying for exactly the area that you've been working on for over a decade. Well, this the, we, we were kind of first to file in patenting this idea. So this is our intellectual property. I think that one would I think that as it relates to what we see, the innovation that we're going to see in the next five years in generative AI face it, it's the first half, the first inning, and the first person's at bat, and we're going to see billions invested by Microsoft, Google, IBM, and others to advance these technologies. And as, the, as, as these technologies advance, we're going to be able to immediately take advantage of the work that they're doing. So this is entirely compatible with our model-driven architecture, and it's, it's, this is all, you know, this works very well for the C3 AI uh, strategy. If the long-term you know, opportunity is still there, the demand presumably is going to be there for better ways of doing all these things, I do still wonder what the environment looks like right now in terms of trying to close big you know, corporate deals right now. Obviously, there's been some choppiness in terms of, uh, of revenue growth recently, and you, because it is such a big ticket, it's a commitment by these companies. So how do things look from here uh, in terms of the, the overall environment? Well, um... You know, I think there has been you know, choppiness in technology markets, and there certainly has been 
a lot of you know, choppiness in equity markets. Uh, we fundamentally changed our pricing model, uh, you know, some months ago to a consumption-based pricing model. So basically, people adopt our enterprise applications. The price is 55 cents per virtual CPU hour. So it isn't a big ticket acquisition. It makes it very easy for small organizations and medium organizations and the largest companies in the world to adopt our technology. And so this is working very well for us.